For your mental health, brought to you by Barber Behavioral Health, a service of Barber National Institute. Time to welcome back Chris Elliott, Vice President of Behavioral Health, uh, here to talk about ADHD and awareness and how that all plays into uh, maintaining strong mental health. Chris, it's nice to have you back. Yeah, thanks for having me back. Yeah, yeah October is uh, National uh, ADHD Awareness Month, mm -hmm. so we just wanted to bring it to everybody's attention. So starting off like the definition of what ADHD is, so it's, you know, hyperactivity, impulsivity, and at levels that start to really meaningfully impact your life. Mm. Uh, it can present uh, differently in everybody, just like a lot of other mental health issues. So uh, my experience versus your experience could be totally different with the same diagnosis. And we hear ADH, ADHD, and I automatically think kids. Is it exclusive to kids or can... It is uh, not. Okay. So it affects children and adults. And one thing that we need to make sure we understand is it's not just like behavioral issues. Mm -hmm. It's a true medical condition. So. Um, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, kids are acting out. Well, they might have ADHD. Mm -hmm. No, there is actually, you know, science behind it that it is a medical condition. Right. And sometimes you can tell because they might be struggling in school and that might be one of the first things to look at. Are they having trouble focusing and, and paying attention? And it's a good place to start. What should parents maybe be looking for uh, in their children at home? Yeah, you know, if your kids' grades all of a sudden start slipping, you know, as the quarters progress, um, if you notice they're really fidgety and restless, those are kind of some common symptoms. Um, forgetfulness, you know, things that are common that you would normally do, but then all of a sudden start forgetting. Um, you know, uh, talking out of turn, you know, just really not thinking about consequences and just acting out, you know, mm -hmm. without really understanding the whole situation. Yeah. Which can be a bit tricky because a lot of those are just kids. I know, I was reading kids. through. Kids, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. reading through some of them for myself and I was sure. like, oh boy. It uh, is right. Yeah. A lot so of it, kids just display those behaviors because they're learning to regulate their feelings and emotions and that's correct. Yeah, how they are. But when it starts to really impact your life okay. and you're really noticing like maybe they're they're being, they're isolating themselves or their grades are slipping. And right. Just, you know, you can kind of know something not right. I don't know if medication is still kind of controversial. It was way back when I was teaching, but I remember in particular I had a student um, who had been struggling and then they diagnosed and medication was involved. And one day he had a really great score on something that we did and I was praising him and he said, I'm, he shouldn't have, but he said, <laughs> I'm taking medication. He was, so, but my point is he was so proud of himself mm. and he was so happy. And I saw such a change in him going through the rest of the year as confidence was coming up. And so I, I don't know if medication is still somewhat controversial with parents. Um, so I'm not a doctor, but the first thing to do is really to reach out to your, your PCP or mm -hmm. your pediatrician and they can really kind of go through uh, if there's additional evaluations that need to be done, but medication is definitely one of the treatment options. Mm -hmm. um, so also is like behavioral therapy and the whole other like general wellness of mental health, exercise, diet, you know, meditation, that kind of stuff mm -hmm. are all things that can help support. Is there an age that it's typical in kids to start to, to notice that, some know, of these? As you kind of hit uh, further along in elementary school mm -hmm. those things can kind of happen and as you hit puberty and all those kind of changes as well um, one thing I do the last thing I want to kind of leave you with is while there are challenges of having ADHD there are actually some strengths that come from it a lot of people that have ADHD are, are energetic right mm -hmm. that's a good that can be good things sure. they are known to really think outside of the box mm -hmm. so there are some positives that you know you may struggle with on a daily basis but it does kind of they have, can be creative yeah they're yeah. very creative. yeah they're known mm -hmm. to be very creative yeah. people as well. I love that yeah. note to end it on yeah, yeah. that's great thanks, thanks Chris. Chris no problem thank yeah. you good to see you we're gonna send it back over to John to uh, see what he's tracking concerning the hurricane moving closer and closer to Florida mm -hmm.